Hello and welcome to part 7 of Let's Create a 2D Platformer in the Godot Game Engine. My name is Colin, and in this tutorial, not so many series, we'll be creating this 2D platformer video game. Of course, in this game, you control the player on screen. You know the deal. You can collect coins, squash enemies, do wall jumps, shoot fireballs, all that great 2D platform game action. Of course, this is part seven in a mini series on how to create this whole project. So if you've not seen the first six videos, I'll put a link to this playlist with all my Godot tutorials up on the screen right now. As it stands in this project, we have a character that can move on screen, we have a walk animation, we have a world, we have a camera that can follow us smoothly around the world. As of the last video, if you have not seen the last video in this series, I'll put a link to it up on the screen right now. But in this video, we're going to tackle one-way platforms. So there are two kinds of platforms that you can have in a game like this. You can have platforms that when you jump up from below them, you bonk your head into them because they are solid objects. You can't go through them from the bottom. And then there are one-way platforms where if you jump up through them, well, you just sail through them like you're going in front of them and then you'll fall back down and land on them. That's the kind of platform we'll be making in this video. So let's go ahead and jump into the Godot editor. Of course, if you like this video or if you're doing something, please go ahead and click on that like button below this video. It really helps out me and my channel. I really appreciate it. And if you want to see more videos like this one in the Godot game engine or in Blender or other technology, click on that subscribe button as well and click that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. So into the Godot editor, I have, of course, my little game character here. And as of the last video, we added a camera to our scene and it is a child of Steve. So if I select Steve's node and use the little arrow tool and move Steve around, the camera follows Steve around and that's where you'll see the game when you play. I'm going to move Steve over to the beginning of my level because I'm going to make sort of a platform that sticks out of the ground. But this platform is not going to be made of the same tiles that we've used before because if I were to make a platform, I'll just select my tile map and I'll select, you know, the green brick and I'll start building this platform like I would want to have it look like in the end. Well, if I fill in the top and I fill in the sides and I draw maybe a secondary halfway platform like that or something. Maybe I'll undo that and maybe I'll draw it right about there. Well, obviously now if I run my game, I'm just going to hit the side of it because these are solid objects and that's not what I want. I want to pass into this area like it's behind me and then be able to jump up and land on this platform and then be able to jump up onto the top of the upper platform. That's what I want. So I'm going to right click and drag to erase all these. We're going to make a second tile map. So to not get them confused, I'm going to double click on the name of this one and type tiles solid and press enter. Okay, I'm going to select my level one node, the root node of this scene, and I'll press plus. We're going to add another tile map and I'll press create. By the way, if you have not seen the tutorial in which I created this tile map and my world and created a tile set, I'll put a link to that video up on the screen right now. I'm assuming that you've watched it, so I'm going to be going quite quick in this video over that part. In other words, creating a tile set and painting tiles and all that. I covered that in more detail up in that video, okay? So I have a second tile map here. I'm going to name this tile map Tiles One Way. And I want them to appear behind, most likely, my other tiles. Not that it really should matter, but in case it ever comes to it, I, I think that's appropriate. So I'm going to drag this tiles one-way node up above tile solid, and that way it'll draw the one-way tiles behind and then the tile solid on top because it draws things in order from top to bottom and it puts things that it draws later in front. So I'm going to select the tiles one way and I need to give it a tile set. Now we saved our tile set from a couple of videos ago and it's called worldtileset.tres. It's a resource. I'm not going to use those because those tiles are all solid objects with collision shapes like static bodies. I don't want that. So I'm going to select tiles one way. I'm going to go over to tile set and I'm going to create a new tile set. I'll click on tile set and I'll make this bottom tile set dock a little bit taller. I'm going to make just four tiles in this video, although you can of course make more. I'm going to go into my assets folder in my file system and I of course have the folder of PNG images of the world sprites. Those are of course in my project folder here. 
I've got an assets folder that I created and a world tiles folder that I gave you in a download link a couple of videos ago with all of these pictures. If you don't have these for yourself, I'll put a link to download them again below this video on YouTube in the description area below. Okay. So back into the Godot editor, I'm going to drag, I'm going to select and hold control on my keyboard uh, four of these pictures, just the top uh, tiles that I need to draw that platform and the green tile. And I'll just drag them into the sidebar. And now I'll zoom in. And I've got some snapping, I think of 16 by 16 turned on, but I'm going to click new single tile for each one of these images. So I'll select the top one, press new single tile, click and drag to select my tile area. If you don't have the same snapping as me, it's okay. Once you start dragging to create a tile, you can go up to snap options. You have to actually start dragging out an area once you click new single tile first, and then you can change the snap options. So if you wanna set this to 64 by 64, the step, uh, so that it matches the size of your tile, that's a good thing. Probably I'll drag and create uh, the whole picture to be a tile. I'll keep going, new single tile, drag, click, new single tile, drag a square, and then click and new single tile. Great. Notice how I didn't do the second step for each of those. I didn't select each tile. And after I created that new single tile, I didn't go over to the collision tab and define a solid area, a collision shape for each tile, because I don't want to bonk into these. I don't want these to be solid objects. So now I'm going to save this tile uh, set. I'm going to select my tiles one way node. My tile set is here. It's sort of temporary. It's not a saved file. So I'm going to save it with a little arrow. I'll click uh, save and I'm going to call this pass through tile set. We called the other one world tile set. So pass through tile set. You can call it whatever you like. I think that's a bit of a clunky name, but I'll press save. So I've got my tiles one way node selected. It is a tile map. And so on the side of my 2D workspace, I have my palette. That's what I call it with my different tiles. If I paint with these tiles, I'm going to paint the top of this platform area here, um, six up from the top because my character can comfortably jump. Uh, in fact, he can jump up to four. So I'm going to make this uh, about eight tall. So right about there and I'm going to paint right about here and I'm going to paint my ends and I'm going to paint the middle area here. I'll speed this part of the video up. Okay. And I'm going to paint a middle platform so my character can jump up and land and then uh, jump up to the top if he so desires. So I'll paint this little half section there. Okay. So now I'm going to try this out. I'm going to press the play scene button and my little character falls and there is no collision shape in any of those pass through tiles. So if I jump, you know, nothing is going to happen. So how do we get there to be actual solid objects here? Well, this is the trick. We're going to create collision objects. In fact, we're going to create static body physics objects that are invisible. And when we do that, there's a really easy checkbox, just one that makes them one way. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'll pan up. And it's not really important where you put uh, these static body physics objects like a floor or platform object in your node tree. Although it makes sense to me to select your tiles one way uh, tile map node and make that the parent of all of these uh, static body objects so that you can keep them all organized kind of under one parent here. So this will kind of become like a folder for all of those invisible static body objects. So I'm going to select tiles one way. I'm going to press plus. I'm going to do a search up in the top bar for static body 2D. This is like a solid object that is a physics object that you can land on and you cannot move. So I'm going to select it, double click. I've added a static body 2D. We have an error, of course, because a static body needs a shape. It needs a collision shape 2D or a collision polygon 2D. In one of the first videos, we actually use static body 2Ds to create those really unsightly platform floor objects that we had. Those had just the Godot icon as their image. They had a sprite, in other words, 
but these static bodies don't need a sprite because they're going to be invisible. But all a static body really needs is a collision shape to work and that error will go away. So with static body 2D selected, I'm going to press plus. I'm going to add a collision shape 2D, which of course you can search for. I'll just double click right there and it needs a shape. So I'm going to define with the collision shape selected a shape for this. We're going to use a rectangle shape just like that. And it adds it up into zero, zero or at zero, zero in my world. It's quite small. I can leave my static body right here if I like, and that might actually be ideal for me because I could just move this collision shape. Oops, I selected my, my tiles. I'm going to press control Z on my keyboard and select the collision shape. And can I drag this? You know what? It's dragging my tiles solid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag tiles solid above tiles one way. And that way I won't accidentally select it because tile solid was in front of my collision shape. When I clicked and drag, it was selecting tile solid. Now it's behind. So now if I select collision shape 2D, I should just be able to drag it around. And yes, I am just dragging the collision shape and the static body still thinks that it's at zero, zero. But that doesn't really matter in this case because I'm just going to have invisible platforms. I'm never going to move them or have to know where they are. So I think that's okay. I'm going to select my collision shape. I'm going to make it wider and taller. In fact, if I move it down to where this bottom platform is, you can get a sense of what I'm going to be doing here. But I want to make this platform collision shape really perfectly line up and this will save you problems and headaches later on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the grid in the 2D workspace, and I'm gonna make all of my objects, or this object at least, snap to that grid. So there is a grid option in the workspace. If I go to view, I think it is, I can turn on uh, rulers, and that will give you a sense of things that you can add. But I think if I turn on snapping. Yeah, snapping will enable the visual grid on the screen, but it's not at a very good increment. It's showing kind of major lines and then minor lines, but they don't line up with my uh, tile grid, my orange grid, and so it doesn't work for us very well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select my collision shape again. I'm going to click these three little dots, which is actually a menu for snapping. And I'm going to go to configure snap. It doesn't look like a menu, but it is. So I'll go to configure snap and I'm going to enable snapping to every, our tiles are every 64 pixels or that's how wide each tile in our tile maps are. So instead of 64, I'm going to use 32 though, because when you move around a collision shape, the point where you're moving it is based on its center. So I want there to be an intersection of the grid in, in the middle of every one of the tiles in my tile map. So I'm going to say grid step 32 uh, by 32 pixels. And I'm going to make the primary line, the, the more visible line, every one step. So every single line will be a primary line. And I'll press close. If I compare the grid that's on the screen right now to my tile maps, you can see that they line up perfectly. I've got my major orange lines every two lines because these orange lines are 64 by 64 squares where I have 32 by 32 squares in my snapping grid. So now if I select my collision shape and I'll pan down and I grab its little pink handles to transform it, it should snap to those lines. Now my collision shape, I kind of moved it in a funny way or when I didn't have snapping turned on. So now I can move it and it'll snap to one of the intersections. So I'm going to snap it to right about there and I can pull the top down and now it perfectly snaps. Okay. So now it's snapped into the middle line of a 64 by 64 set of a uh, row of tiles and I can move it around and I'm going to put it right in the middle and just make it a little bit wider. Okay, so that is absolutely perfect. I have to make one more platform though. I'm not gonna have to make another static body 2D though. I can just add more collision shapes as children to this static body 2D object. Yeah, a static body object can actually have multiple parts that are separate, that's totally okay. All you need is multiple collision shapes. So I'm gonna select the static body 2D. I'm going to add, I'll press the plus button. I'm gonna add another collision shape 2D. I'll double click. Uh, this collision shape 
2D needs a collision shape. So I'm going to add a rectangle shape to it. And you can see it's up there. I'm going to drag it down. And because we have snapping turned on, it'll just snap to the right increment, or at least it might snap to the top of a tile or the bottom, but I'll put it in the middle and I'll stretch it out side to side and up and down. I can move it around, stretch it out, and it should fit perfectly if I put it in the right center position. Okay. So the last step here to make this all work, because right now, if I play my scene, it uh, will not quite act right. If I jump up, well, I'll bonk my head against that static body's collision shape right there. Of course, I can still walk through the area, the green area where I am right now, and I can still jump up, hopefully, onto the top of that platform. But again, I bonk my head into those invisible static body collision areas. What I have to do, the secret, is I have to select each collision shape and go over to the inspector and check one-way collision to on. That's as simple as it gets. When you do that, I've got the bottom shape selected here. You'll see that once I check one-way collision, it has this little downward facing red arrow that indicates the direction that you have to fall in order to collide with this static body collision shape, okay? So it's by individual collision shape 2Ds. Even if they're in the same static body, I have to go to each one. So I'll select this collision shape and I have to enable this collision shape's one-way collision checkbox as well. So now if I zoom out and I press play scene, I can walk under that platform and jump up and I just nicely land on top of it. If I want to go down, I have to move off the side of it and fall down. But as you can see, I can jump over it. I can jump up through it and I just nicely land. If I jump up on the top one, it just works. So that really is it for getting one-way platforms into your 2D platformer game. I will just say one note for Mac users out there. If you are using Godot on a Mac, the Mac OS operating system doesn't have great support for the OpenGL programming language or the graphics library that enables graphic programs like Godot and Blender to run on their operating systems. It turns out that having a lot of lines in your 2D workspace, like the grid, like the little lines on your ruler, can really slow down your gameplay when you test your game, when you press the play scene button. Your game might run really choppily, if that's a word, choppily. So what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna turn off snapping, get that grid off your screen. You'll wanna disable the ruler. So if you got the ruler turned on, turn it off. You might even wanna make your editor really small to kind of hide any lines that might be in this area. And then your game should be smoother. You might even press play scene and then you might even minimize your uh, editor off screen so then you can play it and it should be smoother. This is not gonna affect your game when you finally export it. I just ran into this problem a lot when I was practicing using Godot on my MacBook. Okay, so that will be it for this video. Of course, if you like this video, if you learned something in it, please go ahead and click on that like button below this video. It really helps out me and my channel. If you wanna see more videos like this one in the Godot engine or in Blender or other technology, click on that subscribe button as well and click the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. Check out my Facebook page and my Instagram page. In those two places, I post sneak peeks and previews of what I'm working on next. Those two social media platforms is where I communicate with you the most, except of course here on YouTube. But that'll be it for this one. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.